The film opens by showing a young blonde woman named Jessie slowly walking into the water at the edge of a calm lake. The atmosphere is quiet with a gentle breeze blowing, and the bright sun creates a warm summer ambience. As Jessie immerses herself in the water, the quietness begins to shift as she senses that something is wrong, as if someone is watching from beneath the water. Shortly after, Jessie is slightly startled when her boyfriend, Keith, suddenly emerges from underwater after hiding, and then lifts her from the water onto his shoulders. They laugh together, and their intimacy is evident. Although Jessie initially protests gently, Keith removes her top and throws it far away. As a result, Jessie scolds Keith and asks him to retrieve her top, but Keith just laughs and promises to get it after he finds some food at their trailer. Unbeknownst to Jesse, a much greater threat is approaching. As Keith leaves and Jesse resumes enjoying the water, she suddenly feels a strong pull from below. Panicking, Jesse begins to scream for help, but her cries are in vain as Keith, now too far from the lake, cannot hear her desperate screams. Jesse struggles with all her might, but a shark suddenly attacks her brutally and drags her underwater. Consequently, red stains fill the water surface, with no one witnessing it. Jessie has vanished and been eaten by the shark. On the other hand, seven students from Tulane University, Sarah, Nick Beth, Malik, Maya, Blake, and Gordon are starting their trip to Sarah's family's vacation home located by a remote lake, not far from Lake Pontchartrain. During the trip, their atmosphere is filled with laughter and vacation spirit as they look forward to a fun time, relaxing in a large house with access to a beautiful lake. Shortly after, they stop at a local bait shop to buy some supplies. At that moment, Sarah, who has not been back to the area for a long time, encounters her ex-boyfriend, Dennis, who seems to still harbor resentment. Along with his friend Red, they begin to harass Sarah's group with racially charged taunts, particularly towards Malik, who is black, and Maya, his Latina fiancé. Tensions between the groups escalate, but Sarah manages to defuse the situation with her calm and mature demeanor, although she feels uncomfortable meeting Dennis again. After that, they continue their journey to the vacation home by speedboat. Sarah, who is driving, demonstrates her skill at controlling the boat at high speeds. However, her behavior attracts the attention of Sheriff Sabin, who decides to chase Sarah's group with his patrol boat. Soon after, Sarah's friends become worried and panicked, but when the sheriff manages to stop them, the atmosphere changes. It turns out that Sheriff Sabin is an old acquaintance of Sarah, and after a brief chat, he also shows friendliness by joining them, drinking beer and laughing. Sabin also expresses his delight at seeing Sarah back in the area after not returning for three years. When they arrive at the vacation home, the mood becomes more relaxed. Gordon starts teasing Beth, trying to catch her attention with his usual jokes. Meanwhile, Sarah, Nick, Blake, Malik, and Maya decide to go water skiing on the lake. Everything seems to be going smoothly until a shark has entered the lake and suddenly attacks Malik viciously, biting and tearing his right arm. Panic spreads among them, so Nick, Blake, and Maya quickly react, trying to save the severely injured Malik. They manage to bring Malik back to the shore, but his right arm is gone. Nick, who is a medical student, acts swiftly to stabilize Malik's condition using his medical knowledge to stop the bleeding. After that, Nick swims back into the lake, determined to retrieve Malik's missing arm. However, while in the water, Nick realizes that the shark that attacked Malik before is still lurking for a new prey. As the shark begins to chase him, Nick feels the tension as he swims against time. Fortunately, Nick manages to return safely to land, although without finding Malik's arm. Due to Malik's severe injuries, Sarah, Nick and Maya attempt to take him to the hospital using the boat. However, their journey does not go smoothly, as the blood dripping from Malik's wound attracts more sharks. One of the sharks then attacks their boat, causing an accident that results in Maya falling into the water. Maya tries to save herself, but is ultimately eaten alive by the vicious shark. Their boat also suffers damage to the steering system and crashes into a gas pump in front of the boathouse, which then explodes leaving them stranded with no way out. The situation worsens when they realize there is no cell phone signal in the remote area and the house does not have a landline, so they cannot contact anyone for help. In the midst of this critical situation, Dennis and Red reappear. They offer to help take Beth and Gordon back to shore, 
But Nick, concerned about Malik's condition, refuses to move him. At the same time, Red offers a theory that the sharks might have entered the lake due to a strong storm. However, Dennis has a more sinister theory, suggesting that someone might have deliberately introduced the sharks into the lake. Unexpectedly, Dennis reveals that he and Red are the ones who deliberately released the sharks into the lake, intending to let Sarah and her friends be attacked by the sharks for their sadistic entertainment. Afterward, Dennis forces Gordon into the water. Although he manages to swim to the nearest mangrove tree, Gordon is ultimately eaten by a bull shark that leaps from the water and tears him from the tree trunk. Beth, who was with Dennis and Red at that time, also meets a grim fate. She is forced to face small cookie cutter sharks. Despite her efforts to escape, Beth also becomes a victim. Back with the remaining group, Blake tells Malik about Maya's death, which enrages him and leaves him feeling desperate. Eventually, Malik decides to seek revenge, entering the water with a spear. Despite his bleeding wounds, Malik manages to kill a hammerhead shark, though he suffers more severe injuries in the process. In short, Nick and Blake drag the shark to shore and realize that it is not the one that attacked Malik. They also find a camera attached to the shark's body, further strengthening the suspicion that the sharks are being manipulated by someone. After that, Nick and Blake try to get Malik to shore using a jet ski, but another shark starts pursuing them. Realizing that Blake could move faster without him, Malik decides to sacrifice himself. Unfortunately, Blake does not survive either, as a large great white shark leaps from the water and eats him. Soon after, Sheriff Saban reappears, but this time he appears suspicious, while offering soup to Sarah and Nick to calm them. However, when Nick collapses after drinking the soup, Sarah realizes that something is wrong. Additionally, when she goes to the kitchen to get a towel, Sarah finds that her dog has also collapsed after eating the food given by the sheriff. Consequently, Sarah quickly grabs a knife and prepares to confront the sheriff, but Dennis arrives and disarms her. Soon after, Dennis and Red take Sarah to their boat, while Sheriff Sabin takes Nick to the boathouse and prepares to drown him in the lake, where sand tiger sharks are waiting. At that moment, Sabin reveals that he, Dennis, and Red were inspired by Shark Week and the gruesome faces of death videos to record people being eaten by sharks, planning to sell the footage on the internet for thrill seekers. Unexpectedly, Nick manages to fight back when Sheriff Sabin is momentarily distracted. Nick then frees himself and ignites a spilled can of gasoline, causing flames to immediately engulf and burn the surrounding area. Sabin, panicked by the blaze, tries to escape but is caught in the fire. In that condition, he runs to the edge of the lake and unwittingly jumps into the water. As soon as his body enters the lake, the hungry sand tiger sharks quickly attack and devour him alive. Meanwhile, on the boat, Dennis reveals his motives behind his actions. With a vengeful expression, Dennis tells Sarah that he has not been able to forget the incident three years ago when Sarah left him abruptly after their last diving date. At that time, Sarah was disturbed by two strange incidents that terrified her. First, Sarah suddenly lost air in her diving tank, but Dennis seemed indifferent to her safety. The second was when Sarah ended up injuring Dennis with the boat's propeller as she tried to escape after Dennis attempted to attack her in the water. This event left Dennis with the scars on his face he has now. Dennis's resentment towards Sarah is further fueled as he recalls how Sarah threw his dog into the lake in an attempt to save herself, leaving him injured. Dennis and Red then place Sarah into the shark cage and lower it slowly into the water. At the same time, the sound of splashing water grows louder as the cage sinks deeper. In the water, Sarah struggles, trying to stay calm and think clearly, but she knows her time is limited. Soon, a large great white shark emerges from the darkness of the water, swimming aggressively around the cage. The shark is clearly hungry and the smell of blood in the water worsens the situation. Unexpectedly, Nick reappears, trying to save Sarah from despair. After managing to find a way to reach Dennis and Red's boat, Nick attempts to take Red hostage, using this tactic to force Dennis to release Sarah. But Dennis does not give up easily, quickly grabbing his weapon and shooting Red without hesitation. The shot halts Nick's actions, and Red's body falls into the water. Seeing this, the sharks that had surrounded the boat quickly attack Red's body, tearing it apart within seconds. 
With the situation becoming increasingly dire, Nick and Dennis fight fiercely until they fall into the water. At the same time, the great white shark, which had been lurking from a distance, sees the opportunity to strike. Without warning, the shark attacks Dennis, biting his body with incredible force. As a result, Dennis, who had been so confident, becomes a victim of the creature he used to torture others. His body is dragged into the water, and the shark quickly devours him completely. Unfortunately, the same shark shifts its attention to Sarah, who is still trapped in the cage. The shark's sharp teeth quickly strike the metal bars of the cage, trying to reach the terrified Sarah inside. Sarah can also feel the cage shaking violently each time the shark hits it, and the bars of the cage start to bend. In the final moments, Sarah's dog, which had previously collapsed from the poisoned food, manages to wake up and helps Nick. Agilely, the dog retrieves the powerhead weapon from the boat, allowing Nick to quickly use it to shoot the great white shark attacking Sarah's cage. The bullet from the powerhead hits the shark's head, stopping its attack instantly. With the shark dead, Sarah is finally freed from her life-threatening situation, allowing Nick to swim to the cage and quickly free her. The two of them swim with all their strength toward the boat, still floating on the lake surface. Although they manage to escape, Sarah loses consciousness from being in the water for too long. Seeing this, Nick quickly starts performing CPR on Sarah. He continues with chest compressions and artificial breaths repeatedly, trying to restore her breathing. For a moment, there is no reaction from Sarah, and Nick is on the verge of despair. However, with one final push, Sarah eventually comes to coughing and taking a deep breath. Sarah, with a hoarse voice, thanks Nick for saving her life. They look at each other, filled with relief and a sense of connection after facing the life-threatening ordeal together. Slowly, they share a brief kiss, a symbol of the relief and deep connection they feel after going through the harrowing experience. At first, the atmosphere seems calm for a moment. However, in the distance, a startling sight occurs again. Another great white shark suddenly emerges from beneath the water surface and leaps high into the air before diving back into the dark water. This moment indicates that although Dennis and Red have been defeated, the threat from the sharks in the lake is not entirely over. Moral lesson from the story, never trust a vacation lake that's too quiet. It might be a shark's new snack bar. And if your ex shows up, just swim away because you might end up in a cage fight with a shark.